Hi everybody and welcome to Crafternoons. My name is Michaela and I work at the St. Albert Public Library and you can usually find me up at the Jensen Lakes location. I'm so excited that you've joined us for Crafternoons today because we're going to be making one of my favorite things. Today we're going to be making books together and this is a really great craft for kids of all ages. Ages 1 to 100 everyone can create a book like this and there's so many different things that you can do with them. So what I'm going to show you today is how to make these books and then give you a couple of ideas of things that you could do with them. All right, so to get started, we're going to need a piece of paper. Now what I have here is a legal sized cardstock paper, but I know that this can sometimes be hard to find. Um, so feel free to use any other paper you have lying around. Cardstock does generally work the best because it's a little bit sturdier, but if all you have is printer paper, that will work just fine. So step number one is we're going to take our paper and we're going to fold it in half. So I'm just going to match the corners here and I'm just going to press down but really gently. You can see I'm not pressing it all the way down there um, and that's because we're not actually trying to fold the paper. I'm just trying to mark it so that now there's a bit of a line in the middle there because we're going to cut this paper in half. So I'll take my scissors and we can start cutting it. There we go. Okay, so now we have two pieces of paper that should be about the same size. I'm gonna start with this one, and this is the long way, the top is the long way, and we're going to fold it in half. So again, we're just gonna match those corners, and this time when we're folding, I'm gonna press all the way down. I'm gonna press quite firmly there, because we want to fold this down as hard as we can, and when we take our hands off, it should stay pretty much all the way closed. And then we're gonna repeat this process for the other sheet of paper. So fold it over, match the corners, and push down pretty hard. There we go. All right, so now what we have is two pieces of paper, both folded in half. So on one side, you're gonna have the folded edge, and on the other, you're going to have the open edge. We're gonna match the folded edges together, and I'm just gonna tap it on the desk here, and then this way, so that we know that this corner is nice and lined up. So now we're going to take our hole puncher and I'm going to punch one hole here and punch the other hole here. Okay, so we'll punch that one and then the other one down here. And when you're punching your holes, make sure that you're not punching too close to the edge because if you punch too close to this edge, your pages could rip. All right. So the next thing that we're going to need is we are going to need some of this yarn. So I'm going to take this yarn and we're going to want a fairly long piece of string. For this, longer is better than shorter because we can always trim it at the end but it's hard to add extra string on once we've cut the string. Alright, so now I'm going to take this long string and I'm going to fold it in half. Um, and I'm going to go to the looped end and I'm going to make one cut right there. So we should have two strings that are about the same length. So with this first string, I'm going to take both of my papers with the holes punched through and I'm going to thread this through the book. And I'm going to pull until these strings are about even, right about there. And then I'm going to tie it in a bow. Now when you're tying this bow, make sure that your bow isn't too uh, tight. If your bow is too tight, then your pages are going to rip on the book. So a good rule of thumb if you're not sure how tight to tie this is if you can stick a pencil underneath your string, then that's a good sign. So we're going to do the same thing with the next one. Let's stick that through, pull them until they're about even, and then we're going to tie it off. Don't worry about double knotting your bows quite yet. Um, that's going to come at the next step. But before we do that, we just want to make sure that we can open our book. So mine opens really well here. You can see that the string isn't pulling on the hole. If your string is too tight, you'll see that it will actually make an indent in the paper where the string meets the paper. And if that happens, just undo your bow and retie it. Once you know that your book can be opened easily, um, then I'm going to pull this bow a little bit tighter and make these loops a little bit smaller so they're not quite so big. Um, and then I'm going to use these loops and we're going to tie them in a knot. So just like you would make a double knotted bow. Okay, so we'll tie that off. There we go. And then we're going to take these really long strings and we're going to trim them to a better length. Okay, there we go. And then we'll do the same thing with the second one. Just make those loops a little bit smaller. 
there we go. And then tie them in a knot. Perfect. Okay, and then one last step. We are going to trim those ends. Okay, so now we have a book and it has been tied together and it is ready for you to decorate. So now that you have your book, we can talk about what sort of things you can put inside of it. So my first example here, I'm going to take this book here called Cats, Cats, Cats. And on the inside here, the child has decorated this side of the paper and then dictated the words that go on the other side. So this is a really great way to teach your kids about how stories work and how books work and how the text is often related to the pictures, which is going to be really important for them when they're starting kindergarten or grade one and are starting to read on their own. Now this is something that you can do with kids who are toddlers, preschoolers, even into kindergarten. This is a really fun activity and you can decorate the pages with whatever you have at home. So we have some stickers on here, but you could also try stamps, you could do markers or crayons, whatever you have lying around would be great for this. Another thing that you could try is you could make an alphabet book. So I have an example here um, with a big letter A on this side and then on this side of the page I've drawn a couple of things that start with the letter A. We have an apple and an ant there. So you can draw pictures or if you have some magazines you can also cut up the pictures in magazines or flyers and you can use that to paste onto this side of the page. And you could do your book with every single letter in the alphabet. So that's another idea. And finally, if your child's a little bit older and they're already reading and writing on their own, these books are still a great way to encourage them to tell stories. So this one here is one that could be done for an older child. On the top here, there's lots of space to draw a picture. And then on the bottom, we've drawn some lines and then let them fill in the story. So this one here, there's a big mermaid on the side, but you could draw whatever you'd like at the top and then write your story on the bottom. So when you've made your book, feel free to post a picture on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram and tag us in it because we'd love to see what you've created in your own books. Don't forget to follow us on social media because we always post lots of information about our upcoming programs and events. Bye everybody!